Welcome, my friends. I'm here to do another Star Trek video, so I'm actually going to be, uh, I guess you could say reacting to an article from Screen Rant here written by uh, Dana Hansen. I've never done one of these before. I've seen other people do them, so I guess we'll have to play this by ear, see how it goes. I do not have an ad blocker on, so hopefully things don't get too zany. So number one here we have, who is the Enterprise's new science officer? And this is one I've actually given a little bit of thought myself because I was trying to compile a list of who I might want to see if this show actually goes into production outside of the cast that was already established. As we can recall from the Picard Season 3 storyline, they had a science officer, a pretty good one in my opinion, Lieutenant Tavine. However, she was killed as part of that uh, that coup, that plan by the, the changelings, so she is no longer with us. And while I do like the idea of uh, certain characters coming back for the show that were killed off, Again, I don't think that we should just be willy-nilly bringing everyone who's ever died in the history of Star Trek back to life just for the hell of it. So while it would be great to have her in a show going forward, I mean, they could always do some sort of shenanigans like, oh, she was a part of twins, so her twin sister is now on board or something like that. I think, and this is something that I've been championing for a while, uh, two possible choices, one, again, can't happen, I would go with Naomi Wildman. Now, whether or not she actually became a science officer, we saw her in a similar type of role in Shattered from Voyager, a possible future where she ended up becoming a science officer type character on board the USS Voyager whilst they were still stranded in the Delta Quadrant. Obviously, that history has been changed now because Voyager arrived home earlier. Out of all the characters that we could see returning, Hers makes the most sense. The ship is going to be captained by Seven of Nine, somebody that Naomi Wildman looked up to as a mentor, kind of befriended. Seven of Nine had a relationship with her as well, and I think that would be a fantastic new addition to the crew. She's somebody who has a lot more to give to the Star Trek franchise. I know the actress has gone on to actually be an actress. A, it wasn't just a child actor who kind of bailed on everything. So she would make sense if she was to come back. Alternatively... They could recast because the last time we saw her, she was fairly young, and it would just be a fantastic kind of bringing the family together. I could feel that Seven of Nine might want to have someone on the ship like this, and my other suggestion would have been Echeb. However, we saw how that ended in Picard Season 1. I still like to believe that isn't the case and that was a false memory, but like I said, if they're just going to bring everybody back to life, it does get a bit meaningless. But I don't want to go into that right now. That would require a lot more work to get to that point. So going on to number two here, who is the Enterprise's new Doctor? Now... I don't think they necessarily need one. Commander Oak, I believe is how you pronounce her name, was the Doctor in Picard Season 3 of the Titan A before it rebranded. Obviously, she could have moved on. If she isn't going to be the Doctor on this ship, I think personally, if this is going to be the case, it should not be somebody that we have met before. If it were to be, let's say, Beverly Crusher, apparently, or the Doctor here like they're proposing, I don't think she should be the main Doctor I guess, unless they're trying to throw a curveball in here saying that she is the uh, she's the new EMH or something like that. Don't like that. EMH Doctor from Voyager. Again, it makes a little bit of sense because he's got that personal relationship with uh, Seven of Nine. But at this point in his career, I don't think he wants to just necessarily be a Doctor on a ship. And it would feel too much like a Voyager continuation if they're to bring in all those characters. Again, it would make sense for him to guest star. It would make sense for him to come on board and have some interactions with Seven of Nine going forward. But as the chief medical officer... I think personally the best case scenario is to bring in somebody new if they're not willing or able to have Oak continue in that role. And I would personally like her in that role. It seems to me that she was playing an unjoined Trill. So she was a Trill without the symbiote in her gut. And I think that could be worth exploring. It could be interesting to see that type of character because while we do know they exist, while we have met them sort of uh, ancillarily in DS9 particularly, we haven't really had a full exploration of a trill without the symbiote, an unjoined trill on an ongoing basis. And I think that could prove to give a little bit of a new angle, a little bit of new character development if we keep her. If not... I just want it to be somebody new, whether or not that be an emergency medical hologram or a live action doctor. 
Either way, I don't want it to be a returning character. Who is the Enterprise's chief engineer? We have seen in the past, or maybe you haven't, I have heard in the past, a lot of people wanting uh, either of Geordi's daughters to be given a more significant role here. Now, obviously, we know that Crash LaForge is the helmswoman, the pilot, so she wouldn't make any sense being the chief engineer. Would Alandra LaForge make sense being the chief engineer? And unless there's a significant time jump, I'm going to say no for a couple of reasons. One, her rank wasn't high enough. Two, her experience didn't seem to be high enough. And I feel like it would just be kind of questionable decision making on Starfleet's part to put um, a family like that on board. Now, I know we have precedent on Voyager. There were twins and things of that nature. But I do feel like it would be a bit uh, counterproductive to have an entire family serving on a ship together. And I know there is nothing but contradictions to this in Star Trek lore in the past. The Enterprise D had entire families on it, but based on all the situations that we've had with the Borg, the Changelings, the Dominion, it just feels like keeping entire families together kind of uh, throws a little wrench in there. Now, I will address this because we have seen a lot of people kind of toying with the idea an emergency engineering hologram being played by Todd Stashwick kind of reprising the role of Liam Shaw. I kind of like that idea. However, I don't like it to the point of that being the way that uh, Liam Shaw returns to the series. I think, personally, it should be a new character, but it should be a character based on something new and intriguing. So, like, Strange New Worlds had Hemmer and Enar, a character in a species we have very little to go on so they could develop and build on this new character. I personally think it would be really, really cool to have a Horta as the chief engineer. I believe this was done in a novel or a... Uh, or a comic or something like that, but I believe this could be really cool. Bring a legacy Star Trek character, a species, a race, whatever you want to call them, back into the fold who we have very little information on, somebody that kind of ties it back to those early days and allows us to grow with somebody unique because... After Strange New World, spoiler alert, lost Hammer, we're basically down to all human-looking characters. So to have something very, very alien-esque looking here, and perhaps it wouldn't be somebody that we have to see all too often, that's just my thoughts off the top of my head. What do you think about that? Would you like to see a, a Horda or something like that? Will Alondra LaForge be assigned to the Enterprise? And I don't think that should be the case. Now, whether or not she wants to continue acting, I guess, is really the core of the issue here. Does she want to continue acting in the Star Trek universe? Would she prefer to do this in a legacy show to have the sisters interact? I personally think that maybe she should keep the position she's in working with her father at the Fleet Museum or perhaps a shipyard, wherever he might be reassigned, and that she should be... In essence, a recurring guest character along with possibly Geordi LaForge because obviously there's going to be that family connection. So I think she should be a recurring character, at least in season one if the show were to go on, but not necessarily a permanent member of the Enterprise G crew. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that she should be a main component of this series? How traumatized are Starfleet from their Borg assimilation is number five. This is definitely going to be an interesting question because... I think that uh, it could provide a little bit of story elements, but I don't think that it should provide the main crux of a Starfleet legacy show, or Star Trek legacy, I guess I should say. The Borg assimilation plot is definitely going to mess some people up. But I think that that should be a background element and maybe something that one or two characters have to deal with. So like they're showing here, I think personally, Sidney LaForge would be the perfect conduit for that sort of trauma going forward. That could provide a little bit of narrative through line, but to have everybody just over the moon dealing with this crisis... I don't think that's necessarily the best way to go. Maybe have some background stuff about how Starfleet's rebuilding. We already know we're one year in the future with that time jump that happened at the end of Picard. So I think a lot of people would have moved on from this. And this is a science fictional world. Yes, people can move on from things a lot more easily in a televisual show than they would in real life. And I think that's the best way to go. Have it used for a couple of characters, but not have it be a main meaty story element for three or four seasons. Just deal with it when you need to, but don't make that the crux of the show.
What is a special counselor to the captain? As we know at the end of Star Trek Picard Season 3, Jack was made special counselor to Seven of Nine. And I believe this was done, and I've heard similar reasoning behind the scenes here, because they didn't want to peg Jack down in a specific position. That is to say, if the show was going to be picked up, they didn't want to make sure that he was 100% the engineer or he was 100% the science officer. They wanted to leave a little bit of wiggle room for him to take over whatever role he needs to be. And whether or not he does go on to just be this nebulous spot, this counselor, this special advisor to Seven of Nine, I wouldn't necessarily even be opposed to that. We've seen similar things in Star Trek before where a character comes on board for a specific role, like a Shelby in Best of both worlds. She wasn't necessarily filling a role on the Enterprise. She was there for a very specific purpose. So maybe because of the history this character has, maybe because of his status being run through Starfleet very, very quickly, he's not necessarily qualified to fill a full-time position, but he is capable of providing various skills and needs for the crew, and he could be implemented in whatever the way the writers feel they need him to be, and maybe after a season of writing for the character, he would end up filling a role better than another role, and they would slot him into a position. That's how I think they should necessarily use him in that, uh, in that procedure. Will Captain Seven and Rafi resume their romance? This is probably going to ruffle a few feathers here, but I don't believe they should, purely because they're captain and first officer on the ship, and I can't imagine that is not breaking any sort of rule. Now, if they are to resume their relationship, and assuming Rafi still is on the show, because I've heard some rumors that she's already taken another show and couldn't be on the show if it were to go forward, I don't know how true that is or not, but if they were to continue their romance... I don't want it to come into play and affect command decisions, and I feel that it's too hard for it not to interfere with the job. I mean, we've seen that on the Orville. We kind of saw that in Voyager when they were trying to throw Janeway and Chakotay together. They should not recommence their relationship unless there's going to be a change in dynamic and Rafi is going to leave the ship and not be the first officer. Then I have no problem with them resuming the relationship. Maybe that's just me. What do you think about that? Moving on to seven, uh, moving on from seven to eight, will Jack Crusher and Sidney LaForge become a couple? Completely going against what I just said before, I don't necessarily hate this. Now, they don't have the power as uh, the first officer and the captain do, so they're not really running the same risks as having the two head honchos running the ship be in a relationship. So I think if this develops naturally, it could work out. Now, whether or not they actually end up together or there's too much trauma there and they have to deal with what happened in Picard season three, or maybe eventually they'll do that whole will they won't they thing they do a lot and they'll they'll end up together further on down the road. I wouldn't necessarily hate that. We've seen this in Star Trek before. Tom Paris and Bellana Torres. Obviously, that was extenuating circumstances in the Delta Quadrant. So I don't think that would be outside the realm of possibility. And they obviously had a modicum of chemistry in what we've seen in Picard season three. Possibly if Sydney is dealing with her trauma based on what happened with Jack. So maybe that'll be something they need to overcome. All right, up to nine. What is Captain Seven's catchphrase? Personally, I don't care. I think this is kind of a dumb little thing Star Trek's been doing. Obviously, we know that she needs to have one because of how they left it. If she's going to have one, it should probably be something that she's had before. Imply and proceed possibly two different variations of that. So you had engage and make it so with Picard. So her engage would be proceed, and maybe her make it so would be comply. That would be in fitting with her character that we've seen in Voyager and a nice callback. If we have to have a catchphrase at all, which I personally don't think we do. And finally, number 10, what will the Enterprise's mission be? 100% it needs to be exploration. You know what? I'm just thinking through this right now. Let's say... There are now exploring space that was once controlled by the Romulan Star Empire. They were so isolationist, they never really explored it themselves. So we're going into relatively unexplored territory, and that's where I'm going to leave it. I think that would be 
ripe for finding some new experiences because the Delta Quadrant is a bit iffy. The Gamma Quadrant, we don't know how that stands and it's probably not worth it to go out there because the Dominion still does exist as far as we know over there. So that leaves the Alpha Quadrant, which is pretty well explored, and parts of the Beta Quadrant where the Romulan Star Empire was. So I'm going to say that's a perfect place for that where the Romulans used to rule unexplored space in their old territory, or through their old territory we find a section of space, something like that. Tell me all your thoughts down below. Are you against any of the things I've said? Do you have any other thoughts? I also set up an account, so if you guys want to throw me a little support, I'll post that down below as well. But do all those YouTube things, like, share, subscribe, ding the bell, whatever you want to do, and until next time, resistance is futile.